Sex in the City. Style analysis. Let's start with episode one, the pilot, Sex in the City. The first time I saw it, I didn't know much about much. Now we're viewing it as people who know everything. I'm a genius. The fashion in the pilot episode feels very different from what the show ends up actually becoming. It was styled by a stylist named Ellen Lutter. Starting in episode two, we see Pat Field. We start to see the emergence of the real Carrie Bradshaw. The pilot's Carrie is very minimal and muted. And she's not eclectic and she's not particularly drawing attention to herself. I think the real Carrie Bradshaw emerges once Pat Field and Sarah Jessica Parker come together. In contrast to Carrie, the other characters are much more in line with who they are. Mm -hmm. You see Charlotte as the preppy type and Samantha's a little more flashy and Miranda's very buttoned up in suits. Carrie's the one who really has the biggest stylistic evolution in these first few episodes at least. She's almost also the character we know the least about. She's the observer in the first episode. Yeah. The one part of the pilot that does feel like the rest of the show is the opening sequence, which was yeah. filmed later on with a little bit of longer hair, a little bit of lighter hair. And she's wearing the tutu that has become iconic. Uh, iconic. The tutu was a $5 <laughs> sample from a showroom sample sale. Pat and Sarah Jessica really believed in it, but they had to convince everyone else. So there's an alternative intro with the blue Marc Jacobs dress. Tutu really gives you a sense of her wacky character and getting splashed by this bus. Getting splashed by a bus that has your own advertisement on it. it like. And you're wearing the naked dress, which we will discuss at a later episode. That naked dress and that tutu give us a little inkling on what the show is going to be. Just watch the pilot and know it gets better, like they say. Everything gets better. Season one, episode three. Bay of Married Pigs. You don't want to go there to that bay. The standout style star is really Miranda. She gets mistaken for a lesbian. She's like, excuse me, I'm not a lesbian. And they're like, are you serious? That outfit that Miranda wears is one of my favorite Miranda looks. Hair slicked back, double-breasted blazer with a coat. Just chic, chic, chic. But the date... I'm troubled by her outfit, but the runner up to Miranda is Samantha. Samantha has a fabulous Helmut Newton moment. Man, they make her embarrass herself nonstop. They almost don't know what they want the character to be. Is she empowered and having fun? Or is she, or a, is joke? she a joke? They're kind of trying to do both. But Carrie has a lot of cute looks in this episode. I think they're playing around with the boyish side of Carrie. There's a lot of bucket hats and striped t-shirts. One of my favorite looks in this episode is when Carrie's walking in the park with her date and she has a Hanson t-shirt shirt on. I love the blue bucket hat with the red coat. I love the colors. It just looks like one of those outfits you just throw on. It looks realistic. This is the first time we also see her in her famous headscarf. It's a signature moment of many ladies. It's season one, episode five. The power of female sex. Carrie goes shopping at DNG. She falls in love with this fabulous pair of feathery sandals. Carrie's card is declined and it's cut up right in front of her. Carrie's been telling us that since episode one, that she has an issue and we just, slap. I think she should get treated. Maybe Maybe you should stop. Don't tell Carrie Bradshaw to stop. I say keep going, Carrie. I don't stop. But luckily, her Euro trash friend, Amelita. We like, all need a friend like Amelita. Yeah, she pays for the shoes. Carrie ends up going on a date when she wears her new shoes with the silver dress and the organza coat. It's very 90s minimalism. I can see Gwyneth Paltrow wearing it. Yeah, it's very low key. The shoes are the only wacky part of the whole thing. When she goes on a date, she's wearing that red coat, the brocade dress, topping it off with a feather boa. The first taste of cheekiness and fun we see. And then at the end of the episode, Carrie appears in the kimono. <laughs> wears in later seasons. Season one, episode six. Secret sex. This episode is all about the naked dress. Carrie has a promotional photo shoot for her column. She wears this new DKNY slip dress. Charlotte later calls it the naked dress. And for obvious reasons. The dress is very nude. She wears it on her first day with Mr. Big. If you wear it, you know what you're doing. That's a seduction dress. That's what a dress meant to seduce does. Yes. Sarah Jessica Parker wore this to the 1997 VH1 Vogue Fashion Awards. And she really looks like yeah. Harry Bradshaw. What was awards. she doing on that red carpet? She was seducing. Season one, episode seven. The monogamists. This episode is really about Samantha's looks. In the first six episodes, Samantha is wearing a lot of black. This is when we really see her wear a lot of color and animal print. I love her in the snakeskin bustier and jacket. She's also fabulous in her red Hervé Leger bandage dress. That fabulous lavender dress with the tassels. Yeah, I love seeing the girls together mm -hmm. and they're each their own little composition. Like, Carrie's dating big now and ever mm -hmm. since she started dating him, she's been addicted 
addicted to slip dresses. I thought it was almost a naked dress again, but there's variations. There's a moment and it's a very Pat Field touch where she has a hair extension clip in and the dress is this raw silk wrap dress. It's very Jackie O to me. Justin Thoreau guest stars in this episode. His outfits are terrible. He's wearing these Robert Graham style divorcee shirts. I call them divorcee shirts because they're like the guys who are at Cheesecake Factory on a date and this is the shirt they're in. Miranda also gets credit for her fabulous tie look. I want to celebrate every fabulous Miranda tie look. Every time I see him, I'm going to let you guys know. Season one, episode eight. Three's a crowd. Miranda is totally the MVP of this episode and it's looking like she's an MVP of the whole season. I did not appreciate the minimalist queen that is Miranda. This we really have to give it off for this double breasted coat. And I love the big white collar. The proportions are fabulous on that collar. Miranda realizes she is unwanted in a threesome. She becomes real thirsty. She's thirst trapping Miranda. She's sexy. She slicked sexy. back her hair. She has a statement necklace. Carrie has one of my favorite looks magenta colored ultra suede jacket and then a very cute schoolgirl inspired look socks and mary janes with a huge chanel bag that's what you wear when you're gonna go stalk your boyfriend's ex-wife charlotte has her delia's catalog look it has all the hallmarks of the delia's catalog half up half down hair the metallic eyeshadow zigzag hair the dress looks like prada i and thought it's the dress silk. looks jessica mcclintock charlotte also wears a fabulous look in this episode it's a two-piece pink tweed suit with the matching purse that look is saying I don't do threesomes. My favorite part of this episode might be the Balenciaga couple and they're seeking someone for an alien abduction fantasy. Hope that works out for them. Season one, episode nine. The turtle and the hair. We start off the episode with the girls at a wedding. They say they're the witches of Eastwick and that's kind of what they look like. <laughs> My best dress is Miranda again. I didn't appreciate Miranda when I was younger. I'm appreciating Miranda now. I'm depreciating Samantha a little bit. I was also troubled by Charlotte's hair. Again, she has kind of a Delia situation happening. I did love seeing all the girls drinking pink Cosmos. It's very 1998. So this is the famous turtle episode. The turtle's known for his bad breath. Samantha gives him a helmet lang makeover, which is the best kind of makeover you can Everyone get. Everyone looks better in helmet lang. Samantha's other date this episode is wearing a really cool 70s collar outside of his jacket lapel. It makes me think of Fight Club. Brad Pitt. We finally get to see a little bit more of Stanford in this episode, and we finally get to meet his grandma. She's wearing Chanel. Original Chanel. And Carrie's actually wearing a super fabulous pantsuit in this episode. It's giving me old Prada vibes, that raw silk. Prada 96. It's called Fat. Fashion. Look it's it up. Fashion. Bye. Sex in the City. Fashion Analysis, Season 1, Episode 10. The Baby Shower. This episode starts with a flashback back to 1990. Is this a costume party? Yeah, Carrie looks like she's doing a cowgirl look. Samantha looked like Peggy Bundy. Teased hair and cheetah print and everything best years of my life are over. Miranda, again, her look held up. Yeah, that little cute French bob. And then the girls attend a baby shower in Connecticut. Samantha's cosplaying as Alexa Demi from Euphoria. Wearing Giacomo. I love Carrie's look. It's kind of giving me the row. She even has those very popular Chinese laundry little slippers that everyone wore. Again, Miranda's looking best here. Her long leather coat is total Prada vibes. And the cool striped sweater underneath. Is that Sonia Ricciel or that. something? I don't know. It's also fun to see inside of Samantha's apartment. The green wall are giving 90s vibes. And the watercolor paintings, everything is so dated. It's coming back like incredible credenza I want it in my apartment my little spy I also saw that Miranda was wearing Vivian Westwood season one episode 11 the drought this episode is all about not getting any hence the drought yeah it's centered around Carrie's fart <laughs> Oh God, we see her neuroses coming out. But that's what made me love the show because I don't like a perfect main character. Mm -hmm. I like a deeply troubled main mm -hmm. character that I can relate to. And Carrie is that. This episode is also a drought of fashion. There's one cool jacket we saw that I love. The silver jacket. And I love Samantha in orange when everyone in the yoga class is in white. She has a lot of straps happening there. They do a lot of classes. They do a lot of yogas mm -hmm. and things. They're active. Another thing that's great about the show is that it's always set in all these different classes and environments that are New York centric. It's not like set in his apartments. I mean, watching Sex and the City was probably one of the reasons why I wanted to move to New York. And that's so lame. Miranda goes to Blockbuster. Is this like an ad for Blockbuster in this episode? Because there's too much Blockbuster. There's a lot of Blockbuster. Welcome to Blockbuster Video. She keeps going back to Blockbuster in her overalls. And we start to see these overalls a lot on Miranda. We see Carrie painting her apartment. It's interesting to see more of Carrie's apartment. And she's wearing this little David Bowie shirt. It looks like something from Pat Field's shop. And she's painting the apartment this eggshell color, which I'm disturbed by. No, because it's going to be yellow tones yellow. on your skin. You do not want yellow. You want white. Or cool tones. 
look small. Enamel type. I didn't think of that. We talked about that. We did? Yeah. I don't remember. See? This episode is not much fashion. Carrie farted and she's very neurotic. Bye. Season one, episode 12. Come all ye fateful. That's a lot to ask from a foreign person to say. Say it again. Come all ye fateful. Faithful. What did I say wrong? Okay, let's move on. This is the last episode of the season. Yeah, this is it. And we get to see Karen a few different good looks. There's fashion here. I love her little 90s look with the pedal pushers and the little pink top. I mean, those are tailored to her. They fit her perfectly. I'm just wondering if you think I could do those. I that think look. they could be cute. I could see them Versace-esque. Very shoe. 90s Versace. Just don't wear them with a plastic Chinese laundry shoe. Oh, no, no, no. And then we see Big's mom. She's a very elegant lady. Carrie and Miranda go to church in this episode to spy. They wear these really cute white gloves. People don't wear white gloves enough anymore. Carrie wears a cute green and white striped little dress. So when they go clubbing in the church, Miranda's look, we hate it. What are you wearing to- And the hair. Go clubbing and the shawl. Charlotte is wearing a cool look here. I don't know if Mugler-esque, it was a pointy- Pointy bust. Yeah, yeah bust. fabulous. But Miranda needs to go home and change. Last scene of the season, we see Carrie preparing to go on a trip with Big and all she has is like this little hat box. I think they're going on a private jet or something. Oh, they have to be. She's wearing high heels and a clutch. That's not a typical airport look. You're not going Southwest, baby. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the show from 1999, break up. They end up not going nowhere. And he leaves her on the stoop in this fabulous looking outfit. I'm so excited for more to come. Thank you to the viewers for watching all these. Here season we go. one is down. On to season two. Bye.